Thank you for joining me for today's Daily Pause. How are you doing? I know when my introvert friends are telling me how crazy this isolation feels, it's truly a test of endurance. Endurance is a theme I've been hearing a lot from many people as I've talked to them these past weeks. And when I think about endurance, I go back to when I was training for and running marathons. While it was a physical endeavor, ultimately it was a battle in the mind to redirect one's thoughts and emotions. One of my marathon coaches gave me this suggestion to use while training. Whenever a negative thought entered my mind, reframe it into a positive context. For example, my legs are so tired today, I just don't think I'll climb that hill. Rather, in that moment, I feel so strong today, I'm going to cruise right on up that hill. Or that cramp in my right side is going to force me to walk the rest of the way home. Rather, breathe deeply into your right side. It will subside. You'll finish this run quickly. And when all else failed, force yourself to smile. Smile even when you feel awful. At least you'll look better. Now these things can sound trite, contrived, but those tools did work. I had the incredible opportunity to run the New York City Marathon. Now I had never run a race in my life, so why not start with a marathon? And the first 14 miles were really smooth. And I remember crossing the 59th Street Bridge into Manhattan, and my left hamstring started to feel a little twingy. This had never happened to me before, so I wasn't sure what was going on. Later, I figured out more about hydration and my salt levels, which ultimately were the culprit. But in that moment, I used a combination of those tools of reframing the situation, as well as thinking about the ways my support team had encouraged me through the process of training. And it certainly didn't hurt when we reached Harlem around mile 21, and there was a gospel choir standing on the steps of their church, just praising Jesus. And through with all of that, I managed to persevere and reach my goal, which was simply at that time, finish the race. Now, presently, I'm hearing from folks the need to change their state, to keep going, to keep moving, to feel encouraged, to release pent-up tensions that we're all holding physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Last week, I enjoyed a virtual happy hour with some friends and as we were updating each other on happenings and what we've been doing over the past weeks the conversation jogged a memory of a devotional book that i bought years ago uh, and it's just a small paperback entitled breakfast epiphanies finding wonder in the everyday and it's by an episcopal priest in bucks county whose name is david anderson and in this collection of short reflections, he's trying to show us how the divine can surprise us, even in the most ordinary settings. Now, in rereading them, uh, one title caught my eye. It was called, Hands Off, We Hatch Alone. And in this reflection, Anderson recounts visiting the kindergarten class at his church's day school. And there was a box of chicks that were in the process of hatching. And so each day the kindergarten class would process by to peer into the box. And as they went by the box, they actually clasped their hands behind their backs. When Anderson asked the teachers, it was, he found out it was their orders, where they said, this is how we approach mysteries we cannot touch. And ultimately, his point in the reflection is if the task of life is to break continually out of the shells that confine us and into freedom, it's a solitary task, one that only we can do ourselves. 
Simply, you could put it, no strife, no life. Or embrace the struggles we individually feel so we can continually work to heal them, to grow through them. This reminds me of a, the Romans text, which one I come back to during hard times. Uh, this is Romans 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The novel, The Wind-Up Bird Chronicle by um, Haruki Murakami features a narrator who is the protagonist in the story. And this narrator spends a lot of time alone lives a somewhat mundane existence and is not in control of many aspects of his life. From that book comes this quote, I am no longer one of them, however. They are up there on the face of the earth. I am down here in the bottom of a well. They possess the light while I am in the process of losing it. Sometimes I feel that I may never find my way back to that world, that I may never again be able to feel the peace of being enveloped in the light. Down here there are no seasons. Not even time exists. This is hard. Our days, our emotional responses vacillate by the moment, the hour, the day. The duration of this feels endless. And yet time and our perception of it is very deceiving. That New York City Marathon experience seems like an eternity ago, but the lessons learned are ever present in me today. And so my encouragement for you today is to keep embracing these current struggles and allow yourself to face the cracks you see and feel in yourself. Grow through them so you can hatch into life. For when this ends and we move into the next chapter and can finally look into a rearview mirror, we will see that this was really just a short moment in our lives. The question for you will be, did you confront your shadows while you were there? Suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint. No strife, no life. So as I leave you for today, uh, I want to share with you a text. Uh, This is a prayer uh, that was written as an anthem that the adult choir sang this past fall on Sunday, November 10th. And the title of the prayer is simply St. Teresa's Bookmark. And it's a very simple text that goes like this. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing. God only is changeless. Patience gains all things. Who has God wants nothing. God alone suffices. God bless you.